Here's the latest release in a series of DIY kits I developed in collaboration with Erica Synths, our five-step sequencer. As with all previous kits in this line, this is not just a module that you have to assemble yourself. Instead, it's meant to be used as an in-depth introduction to analog sequencer design. For that, we again crafted an extensive hand-illustrated manual that will guide you through the core concepts here, implementing a five-step loop, dedicated CV and gate outputs, an internal clock generator, and more. To follow along and try these ideas for yourself, you're going to need two breadboards this time, simply because the whole circuit can't fit on a single one. Ideally, you should also get some long flexible jumpers to make a few connections I couldn't integrate into the layouts neatly. Alternatively, you could also use any other decently long jumper here. Okay, but you're probably curious about the assembled module and its functionality. So let's see what it can do. First off, there are five knobs here that allow you to set CV levels per step. Since this is an analog sequencer, there's no stepping or quantizing. You'll have to trust your ears when trying to dial in a sequence. Next, we've got five switches to control whether we get a gate on a specific step or not. Above these, there is an additional three position switch that allows you to reduce the loop length down to four or three steps. On the other side, there's an additional knob to control the internal clock generator's frequency. Finally, we've got another switch down here that lets you reduce the CV output range from 5 volts down to 2.5 volts. So that's all the control elements. Let's move on to the inputs and outputs. Here, we first got a clock input that overrides the internal clock generator, in case you want to clock the sequencer externally. Next, there is a clock output that will turn into a clock through whenever you do patch in that external clock. Below this, there's a reset input that allows you to send the sequence back to step one at any point. Finally, we've got our gate and CV outputs with which you traditionally drive an envelope generator and a VCO, respectively. With that functional overview out of the way, let's see what the sequencer can do when teamed up with our previously released modules, the VCO, VCA, and envelope generator. Let's set up a traditional monosynth voice. For this, I'll patch the sequencer's CV output into the VCO's CV input, while the gate output controls the envelope. Then I'll route the VCO through our VCA while controlling the latter with the envelope. All set. Let's hear what this sounds like. Using the CV control knobs, I can now set the pitch per step. Also, by flipping some of the gate switches, I can control whether the envelope gets triggered on that step or not, giving us some rhythmic variation. If you need a bit more precision on the CV control knobs, you can reduce their range from five octaves down to just two and a half. This should make it a bit easier to hit the exact notes you're looking for. And if the standard five-step loop is too long or too polyrhythmic feeling for what you're going for, you can always cut it back to four or three steps. Finally, let's see what the reset input can do. For this, we'll connect it to my SQ1's gate output. Next, we'll send the clock output into the SQ1's sync input. This way, both sequences are running at exactly the same tempo. Right now, all gates are turned off on the SQ1, so our sequence is cycling through undisturbed. But watch what happens as I activate one of the gates here. By playing around with activating more or less gates, 
we can make our sequence sound longer and more complex than it actually is. So that's our DIY sequencer kit. If you'd like to get one, it's now available at select retailers. Thanks for watching and until next time. See ya.